All right, so today we're talking about cargo insurance or contingent cargo insurance you may have heard it referred to as. Now the question is, do you need cargo insurance as a new freight broker? And right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, according to the FMCSA, that's the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, the governing body of freight brokers and truckers, they say that freight brokers don't have to have cargo insurance. It's not a requirement. But the question is, will your customers require that you have it? So you have to make a decision at the early part of your business to say, I'm going to have insurance or I'm not going to have it. Of course, if you have insurance, you have to absorb the cost that comes with that. And if you decide not to get it, then you have to make sure that your customers don't require that you have it so you can still move their loads. So I'm going to give you three ways that I think you should approach cargo insurance today. Number one, you can decide to say, hey, as a freight broker, I'm going to go ahead and get a standing insurance policy in place so I don't have to worry about cargo insurance if it's required by my customer. I already have it in place, I have my certificate of insurance, and I just send that certificate of insurance over to prove that I have the insurance, and then I can get set up with that customer, no problems, if of course they require that I have that insurance. The second way of looking at cargo insurance is saying, you know what? As a new freight broker, I already have some costs that I'm dealing with. I don't want to deal with another cost right now. So I'm going to just go out and start engaging customers. I'm going to find out if they require me to have insurance because they may not require it. But if they do, then I can make an adjustment and get the insurance based off of that requirement at that time. So we can start engaging customers and then say, hey, you know what? This is what the customer requires, $100,000 of contingent cargo insurance. Now I'll go out and get that insurance and I'm good to go. Then the third way of approaching cargo insurance is saying, you know what, I'm going to just wait. I'm not going to get any insurance right now. I'm going to wait until I start moving loads and then I'll get cargo insurance on a per load basis. You can go through truck stop. That's the load board. You can get contingent cargo insurance on a per load basis. So it works like this. If you go out and you start moving loads, you have a load and now it's time for you to put insurance on that load. You just go through truck stop and go ahead and purchase the insurance for that one load. That way you're not paying an insurance policy. You are only paying insurance as you start to move loads. Now, yes, that'll help you save money. But the question with that type of insurance is where are you going to get a COI to show your shipper that you already have insurance? Usually with per load insurance, you're not going to have a COI. So I don't like that option because of that reason. Now, me personally, I like option number one. I like to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get my insurance set up. So when I start engaging customers, if, they, if that's a requirement, I can just send them my COI and I don't have to go through all of the rigmarole of explaining why I don't have it and all of that good stuff. I know that most shippers, at least most of the shippers that I work with, are going to require that you have at least $100,000 of contingent cargo insurance to work with them. So I'm going to go ahead and get a standing policy because most reputable freight brokers are going to have contingent cargo insurance. And then some of your customers are going to require that you have auto liability or commercial general, li general liability insurance. You can make a decision on those types of insurance based on the freight. I would allow for the freight to say whether or not I'm going to get that type of insurance. If there's enough freight, if another freight opportunity is with this shipper, the freight justifies the cost, then I'll go ahead and get that type of insurance, but we don't want to just go out and start paying a whole lot of money for auto liability, commercial general liability, because we're talking over $5,000 a year. Whereas with contingent cargo insurance, we're only talking about fifteen dollars to $1,800 a year on that type of insurance. So that's a very big difference. And my advice on that situation is to make sure that the freight justifies the cost. If you can go ahead and start getting opportunities and you're working with a shipper and they're giving you a lot of opportunities, then maybe you can say yes to that type of insurance. But I like starting off with 
the minimum, $100,000 of contingent cargo insurance. And then as I start to move loads, as I start to make money, if there's another shipper that I started to, to work with and they require auto liability or commercial general liability, I can make a decision on that insurance at that time based on what I'm getting from that customer, the opportunities that I see with that customer. The most important thing that I think you really need to consider is the cost of the insurance. When we're looking at the cost of insurance, of course, when we first start our business, all of those costs are coming out of our own pockets. So we wanna make sure that we're getting the insurance that's required, but we're not getting too much insurance. Some people go in and they start talking to insurance companies and insurance companies are in the business of selling insurance. So of course, they're gonna be looking at selling you auto liability, commercial general liability insurance. But in my opinion, to start off, just start off with contingent cargo insurance if you decide to start off with insurance. I also don't think that option number two is necessarily a bad idea because what it does is it allows for you to start engaging customers first and then when they say, hey, this is the requirement, then you get the insurance based off of that requirement. So you're not just spending money on insurance just to say that you have insurance. Uh, again, that's a personal decision and in my opinion, one, two, or three, Either of those decisions should work for you, but at the same time, it's gonna depend on what your customer requirement is. Everything boils down to what the customer requires. So we have to start engaging those customers to find out if we don't already have that insurance in place. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I certainly hope this information has been helpful. If you're interested in learning more about the freight broker business, check out my free five video series titled, How the Load Movement Process Works, link in the description. It'll give you an up close and personal look at me in my office moving loads, talking to shippers, talking to carriers. That way you can get a good idea of exactly how the business works before you take the plunge. Have a great day. Have a great week. I wish you the very best in your life and business. See you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.